and welcome to my channel. Before I start today's video, I need your help because next week, to celebrate getting 1,000 subscribers on this channel, I'm gonna be doing a Q&A session alongside a painting of your choice. So all you need to do is put in the comments box any questions that you've got for me, as well as any animal suggestions for painting, and I'll see you next week. So back to the video today, and I thought I'd do something a bit different. The deer painting you see here is one I started to paint in gouache almost two years ago and never got round to finishing, but when I came across it again the other day I thought I'd give it a second go and try and breathe some life back into it. I had nothing to lose as it had just been stuck in a drawer, so I took off the old tape, gave it a quick iron to try and flatten it and got ready for round two. I was interested to see if the gouache I'd applied two years ago would reactivate and I'll be going to what I found out as well as talking a bit more about gouache and its properties as we go through the video. So with my painting re-taped and affixed to a painting board, I was ready to prepare my gouaches and get painting. The gouaches I'm using today are the Winsor & Newton designer gouache which I used on this painting when I first started it. The paper I'm using is the Winsor & Newton Cotman paper, which is a cold pressed paper but it isn't cotton, so it will be interesting to see how it copes with being reworked. I will list all the items that I've used in the description box if you want to go and check them out. Now if you've watched any of my other videos on this channel, you might know that I like to start with the animal's eyes, as they are the personality and character of the animal, but being that I hadn't touched this painting for a while, and I haven't played with gouache for a bit either, I wanted to start off on an area that wasn't the focal point, so I went in and started on the left hand side of the painting with the deer's ear. Now, as much as it's been two years since I first started this painting, I've also got two years more practice, so I'm hopeful that I'll be able to do a good job of finishing this one off. However, when I first started, because it's a while since I've been using gouache, it is a lot different to watercolour, and I'll talk about how as we go through the video. So to start with, I was kind of thinking that the gouache that was already on the paper would reactivate and I could blend some of those harsher edges out. It wasn't really the case though, as this paper has been dry for a long time, and what I did find was that the paint that was already down didn't really lift up or reactivate in the way I thought it might. So I started off quite cautiously using a diluted gouache for some subtle shading to the ears and tended to use it a bit more like watercolour as that's what I've been doing a lot more of lately. I also tested out my colour mixes on a scrap piece of watercolour paper, but where watercolour dries lighter, its opaque friend gouache tends to dry darker. And in fact you often find that some lighter colours dry darker, but other darker colours can dry lighter, so it's always worth testing out your paints and getting to know them before you plan out a painting. So what is gouache? Well I've mentioned that it's opaque and it is often described as an opaque watercolour, but it actually shares some properties with acrylics and oils as well. Like watercolour and acrylic, you mix gouache with water and you can use it like a watercolour, but gouache is a lot more vibrant and dries with a matte finish. Unlike watercolour though, you can work from dark to light, like you would with acrylics or oils, so it's great for illustrations and is an all round pretty flexible medium, which unlike acrylic and oils, is easy to clean up afterwards. So far as the tools you need to paint with gouache go, they're pretty much the same as watercolour. You still use watercolour paper and you can still use the same brushes that you use for watercolour as well, but you may want to have a few older brushes to hand if you want to add texture or apply thicker layers of paint. I ended up using a few old flat brushes for the hair details on the deer's head, which you'll see in a bit. I also used a fine detail brush when I was rendering the deer's eyes, as you can see here. Now so far I was happy with how things were going, and as much as I hadn't managed to reactivate the gouache on the deer's ear, I was able to use the opaque quality of the gouache to layer over areas that I wasn't happy with. One of my aims for this piece was to smooth out some of the harsh lines that were left from before to give the deer a softer overall look, and this seemed to work well on the soft fur area of the deer's ear. But moving on to the side of the deer's face, I got into a little bit of difficulty. 
The area here was a bit stripy for my first attempt and I was really conscious that the paper I was using, not being cotton, wouldn't hold up to too much working. I also wasn't really happy with the colour and if I was working in watercolour I would try and glaze over another paint layer to change the hue, but you can't glaze easily with gouache because typically adding more water would reactivate the underneath layers and you'd end up with a bit of a muddy mess. So instead I had to add lighter colours and layer over the areas I didn't like using my white gouache mixed in with some other colours to try and change that up until I was happy with it. Moving on to the nose area next and still using my very fine brush I added in some more layers using indigo, violet and some sepia. This area of the painting I found really fun and it was good to be able to layer over those areas that you weren't happy with using the white gouache and then get back the areas of light and bright that you wanted so that I could create a really nice shiny looking nose. I think although I'm still very much an amateur at gouache, I was still able to use some of the skills I've learned and practiced over the last couple of years to be able to build up a range of values that gave the nose area contrast and depth. On the mouth area though, I still reverted back to my watercolour ways and tried to use the wet in wet technique to mix colour on the paper. And as much as you can do this to some extent with diluted gouache, gouache is thicker and heavier than watercolour, so the colours didn't mix as freely on the paper as I'd liked, so I had to revert to layering over with more white gouache. Now when it came to working on the fur detail on the deer's nose, I wasn't really sure what technique to go for. I didn't want to have to render each and every individual hair because I was going for more of a soft smooth look. So what I ended up doing was using a flat brush which was a bit more bristly and not a really good quality one just to kind of stipple in some of those hair details and give the impression of hair whilst not having to do each and every individual one. I quite like the effect that this flat, more bristly brush gave onto the nose area, so I moved up and used a slightly smaller version on the top of the deer's head. This was to add a few more fur details and build up some darker values on the top of his head and then some of the markings going down his face. It was at this point that I finally started to relax into the painting a bit and enjoy it a bit more. I started to get a feel for the gouache and work with its properties and advantages rather than comparing it to the watercolour I'm so used to. I used this same stippling technique to tap in some of the details and the line work on the left side of the deer's face. And this helped to balance out the right side and I felt like it started to look a bit more cohesive. Then it was time to move back up to the top of the painting and the deer's right hand ear here. And it was here that I really started to appreciate the properties of gouache. When I'd first done this painting, I'd laid down a base layer of this kind of orangey pink color. But actually there were a lot of other tones that I could now see that perhaps I either hadn't seen before or that I just hadn't got on far enough in the painting to have put them in. But I was really easily able to layer in some lighter purples, some more browns and obviously put in those bright white areas and layer over the soft white fur on the inside of the ear as well. As much as I felt like the first part of the painting was a real struggle to get back into using gouache again, I was really starting to see the benefits and the advantages and enjoy the process. It is very different to watercolour, but once you get the knack of it and you can practice and see the benefits of it over watercolour instead of trying to use it light watercolour, you can really get some nice vibrant deep rich colours. 
I like that with gouache you can change your mind, correct mistakes and build up layers according to what look you are after. You can get some really nice textures. So far as reactivation goes, I didn't really experience too much of that being that the painting I'd already got down was quite old and the paper didn't really lend itself to being scrubbed or overworked to try and lift or reactivate some of those colours even after a bit of work. So I did generally make use of the layering technique and the opacity of gouache rather than I did with the reactivation. But what I would say is with gouache there is a lot of flexibility. You can use it like watercolour if you want to, to get more looser, lighter layers, or you can use it more like acrylic if you want thicker, more vibrant colours. It really does depend on your style of painting and what you like to paint as well. By the time I got to painting the neck of the deer I had grown a little bit more confident and I was using a more concentrated mix of burnt sienna and sepia gouache. I was using a round brush again and using strokes the same length as the fur and I was also careful to go in the direction the hair was growing in. I was also conscious that I wanted the white spots on the deer's coat to look as part of the coat rather than just look as a separate thing plopped on top, so I tried to feather the edges of the fur around those areas so that they'd look realistic. When it came to painting the deer's back I started out with a more diluted version of the burnt sienna gouache, but that didn't actually cover up some of those water lines that were left from when I'd first started this painting. So instead I went in with a more buttery consistency of gouache, almost straight out of the tube. And to start with this was really scary. It was really thick and the paper started to buckle and complain a bit as well. But it did cover up all of those streaky marks and gave a really rich, vibrant look to the back of the deer. This colour was super matte, so I then went in and added a little bit more detail using a fine round brush. I think if I hadn't gone in and added those extra fur details with a slightly different shade of gouache, it would have looked a bit out of place compared to the rest of his face and neck. But by simply applying a couple of layers of dark sepia and also a few lighter layers, it helped to kind of pull it all together and I wasn't too unhappy with how it turned out. In the reference photo that I painted this picture from, which was from Pixabay, the back of the deer was largely out of focus, so I decided to leave it that way and not add too much detail, but I did just want to kind of blur those spots together a little bit and make them look less obvious on the deer's back. So I just used a really fine paintbrush to do this and left it as it was. So the last thing to do on this painting to complete it were to add in some of those finer white hairs, whiskers and eyelashes and I used a really fine paintbrush for this and used the gouache straight out of the tube. So as much as I didn't have much success with reactivating a two year old gouache on my paper, I did find that the end result was worth the effort. I did really enjoy this painting in the end and I think I definitely learnt some more about gouache along the way. Gouache dries really quickly when you're painting and you can reactivate it in the same sort of painting session but I wouldn't advise leaving something for that long or you might end up finding that you'll struggle. Towards the end of the painting I did really start to enjoy the medium and certainly enjoyed layering over all those different colours to create something that looks so rich and vibrant. But uh, let me know what you think of this painting and how it turned out in the comments box below and don't forget as well to let me know if you have any questions for next Tuesday's Q&A session and if you'd like to suggest an animal for me to paint whilst I'm answering those questions please also leave that in the comments box below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye!